Welcome back. Last time we talked through steady state ramjet operations where you're at say Mach 4, Mach 5. Uh, we talked about some different altitudes. We talked about the, the compression you're getting from the shock waves. The obliques give you more compression than just going through straight normal. And then how you would add fuel and then exhaust it out the back in that sort of steady state operation. So on this episode, we want to talk through more of how we're using the detonation engine to get up to speeds. So we also want to see through how this is making thrust. Also, in particular, though, how this is adding pressure. And so I've got a section over here that's basically just this kind of sections two and three. And we've got some rocket exhaust, VR, you know, for the velocity, temperature, and then there's an enthalpy there if you wanted to have the right combination of temperature and pressure. And we'll have air. I'm going to use red for air, even though the rocket exhaust is hotter. And so this air temperature, this we'll consider as V2, and there's a T2. There's also, you know, density, any combination of these variables you want to think of, of the air. And then this is mixing to become V3, some temperature 3, some pressure 3. And all of this is, is happening at pressure 2. And we'll, we'll basically consider the case for pressure 2 and the pressure of the rock exhaust. This, this is balanced. It doesn't have to be the case, but we'll, we'll think through it as balanced. And so we want to solve then is what is this sort of state 3 and ultimately, you know, is there any kind of pressure gain we're seeing here? So walking through that math, if you do conservation of mass, okay, and so the on this right, you, you add up, you have the contribution of the rocket, you have the contribution of the air, and that's the total. Okay, so that's conservation of mass. And then I, I'm going to break this up, and I'm, I'll still just say it's the mock mass flow rate of the rocket, but mass flow rate of the air, this is rho 1, V1, A1, right? It's, it's the capture area in front of the ramjet. It's also the same as rho 2, V2, A2 because right, we haven't added or subtracted any more mass. Right? We, don't, we don't have a bleed or rejection system that we're, we're tossing away. Okay. Um, and then that's equal to the total. So that's row 3, V3, A3. Perfect, right? That's, that's the combination that we have here on the left. And so that's conservation of mass. Now, if we did conservation of momentum, it's interesting. The, the problem is it's not just fluid variables. You actually end up having a contribution of the force in the system, right? The SR-71 sort of famously, right, the, the nozzle spike, this portion actually created a lot more force. Yeah, it's going to be the same for us as well. Um, it, it's, a, it's, a little, it's a little incorrect. Like, it, the conditions are because of the engine in the back. It, it's, it's, yeah, it wasn't purely independent, just magical spike getting thrust, okay? But we can do a conservation of energy, and from that point of view, you then have, I'll we'll just say it's the mass flow of the rocket. And uh, let's say enthalpy here, you can think, if you wanted to think of it as, say, constants of heat, you can, but I'll just say that's the enthalpy of the rocket. And then you have that kinetic energy. So it'd be rocket squared over two. Okay, that's the energy coming in from the rocket. You have the energy coming in from the air. And, and this one, enthalpy of the air as well, keep this consistent. V2 squared over 2. And that is then equal to, I'm running out of room here, but that's equal to the energy on the back side. And so that is m dot 3, which we know is just the total here. Okay. And then that is enthalpy 3 plus V3 squared over 2. Okay. So from this position, I can also, you know, split this up and know it's the mass flow rate of the rocket plus the air, right? So th this variable is known. I'm not, I'm not too worried about it. I already have that answer. Really, the, the thing that I don't know in this equation is we still don't know V3, and we don't necessarily know T3, right? So T3 came from this, and of course we don't know P3. You know, I, I haven't written down here any, any equation on P3. So we're still, we're still missing a variable. I have, you know, I can come back over here, Right, and come back over here, and I can actually solve for for v3, right? So I, I know that v3, right? If I just do that math, v3 is then. Um, in fact, I'm going to do one more thing and say that the mass of the rocket is just some fraction x of the mass of the air. Okay, so if I do that, then v3 is that fraction, and then I'm going to leave it in the two form. 
rho 2, v2, a2, and then divide by a3, divide by rho 3. So I, I have that form, right? So I have a way to solve for, if I know the density, I have a way to solve for v3, right? And so in the end, you know, have one more formula that we need, and ultimately it's entropy. And so I'm, I'm gonna write it down here first in sort of the real gas form. This is how, uh, you know, our, our analysis code in Venus would solve it, our other codes would go solve this. But in the end, what you, what you have to then do at this point is you're maximizing the entropy, right? It is not true to say entropy is constant, that's not happening, right? You actually have a supersonic system, right? If I draw this out, this is, you know, a jet and it's mixing. And so it gets fully mixed, right? Entropy is going up, it's gonna become fully mixed. And so you're, we want to know is what is the condition, if we're gonna assume this is still kind of 1D even flow, uniform temperature across, then you're ultimately trying to maximize the entropy. Now, if we were doing a, you know, CFD simulation of this, we could maybe relax the evenness of the temperature, evenness of the velocity, and sort of get more grained in there. But we're, we're looking for sort of a standard 1D kind of a top level analysis that we can then decrement with some efficiency losses. And so th this is the process that you would do is maximize that entropy. Now, let's walk through algorithmically what you're gonna do. So in the end, what you're saying, if I have, so given a P3, I'm gonna guess a pressure here, okay? From that pressure, I'm then, then gonna go find the temperature for which these things are true, right? For which this energy, right, at a certain pressure, this energy is equal to that this balances out, okay? Uh, and that's gonna be, if I have pressure and temperature, actually no density, right? So that's, that's what's happening. Given a pressure, find the temperature for which that really means I now have a rho three and a V three and I can see if it matches, okay? And then, right, because that also gives me an enthalpy. And so given this pressure, and so in the end, you know, what you have is sort of entropy versus that P3. And you have a situation where you're then gonna say, okay, here, I'm sweeping over possible P3s and I'm gonna choose this one. Now, um, we already know this from experiments. We know it from lots of different things, supersonic conductors. What's actually happening here, it's not, not a mystery, but this is actually maximized when V3 is sonic. So A being the speed of sound. When, when this is a normal shock, that's actually mean your maximum entropy condition. So a lot of this can actually be then simplified if you need to. Now, if you're trying to establish this for say a scramjet, uh, that, that condition is no longer true. You, you, would, you would still go do this statement if you had, you know, if your V2 is supersonic, you would then just do mixing and, and come up with a maximum entropy. But for us, because this is subsonic, we, we actually know this condition to be true. Maximum entry is going to occur there. So, there's a little bit of a cheat that we can then do. And so on the next episode, I'm actually gonna come back through here uh, and solve it at an ideal gas point of view, because what we can then do at an ideal gas point of view is we can then say, actually, I know this, this is just the gamma R T3. And so we, we can actually come through, as opposed to just saying algorithmically, go search this and find a curve, we can actually plug in some numbers and then get a feeling for, hey, what is the pressure gain we can get with, a, with an adductor or rocket-based combined cycle, right? And so th this, is, this will kind of finish the theory of rocket-based combined cycle. And again, just remember the detonation engine, just make this work in practicality because the distance between the detonation engine and this mixing duct is way short. That's, that's, the, that's actually the, the magic, that's the thing that the detonation engine solves to make this technology real. So we'll see you next time.